Oops. So there's fertigation. It's kind of like your fertility and your water mixed into one, you're irrigating. So here I've got ducks, khaki ducks that are a little pond I have at the top of our land. And you know, ducks love the water, obviously. They love to live around it. It's really good for them. A lot of times, homesteads ducks don't have access to water, but they're funny. We got these, they had never been in water, and they were just like crazy. When they hit the water, they were swimming, playing. I mean, it was the coolest thing. But, you know, their manure has lots of nutrients in it. So to be able to irrigate with nutrient-filled water is like primo. Recreation, I already kind of talked about that a little bit. It's not the best recreation shot, but it's not the worst either. Here's your fig trees. But just thinking about like any kind of earthworks, any kind of systems you put in, you got to think about the human element, like recreating, like having fun, like having beauty, all that is super important. Gully restoration is huge, uh, you know, in the mountains here, but this is all over the world. There are gullies that are formed from, usually from, it can be natural, but a lot of times it's from stripping the land above it and the water funnels into the valley and it gets progressively worse over time the head of that gully just keeps creeping back. So you can do with earthworks, one great thing is to kind of dam them up and then head that water horizontally and spread it out. So here's the plan. We, we had a small gully kind of on the land and we converted it into a filter. So it's, it's a little bit of a wetlands biofilter Basically, I lined the bottom with clay. It's got charcoal and gravel in it. And the water comes down the hill, hits this. It's got to fill up. It goes on the surface, but then it starts, it goes underneath the surface and it has to fill up these little subterranean ponds here. And then it flows over. It fills up this one, then it flows over, it fills up, and then it goes out. So it's a neat little thing you can do. This is specific to the project out there, but you can, you can definitely do something like that. Waste not, want not, respectful clearing. Anytime you're gonna clear a piece of land, you know, I had to change the driveway on my land. All that, all the wood that was there, I put into mushrooms, you know? Anytime you work on a piece of land, you wanna think about how you can respectfully clear it if you're gonna to have to do any clearing in the zones that are appropriate to take back, to clear, things like that. You know, edible fungi, here's my wife, here's some of our mushroom logs, you know. I mean, we got sacks and sacks of mushrooms. And this was, all had been cut, and it was like 20 years old, and I was able to use it. When the blueberry patch was put in, that, that was all previously cut, and this was regrowth that I used to cut, when I changed the driveway to put that in. Hogel culture, is basically, you know, you can use, let me back up, the mushroom logs, you know, you can use the best part of the tree. The branches and stuff, what are you gonna do with that? You can either, you know, a lot of people burn them, you can chip them, which isn't that bad because you can use the chips, or you can directly put it in the ground with hugel culture. Here's a little garden we had going, and this is all hugel mound here. It's highly productive. It's quite amazing, actually. I dug in the ground, you know, basically you're digging a pit, you're putting those branches in there, you're putting topsoil on it and kind of compressing it in there. After a couple years, I was just curious what was going on in there, so I dug in there. It still had branches, but when you touched them, they just were squishy, and it was all water. It was just holding water. The entire branch was just holding water. It had, they have so much water holding capacity this works really well here. This works really well out west where you, you don't want to hold water in ponds out west because you have high evaporation rates. You want to hold it in the ground. So anytime you can hold water in the ground, it's the cheapest place to store water and it's the most effective. You know, here's some potatoes I grew on it. Here was my blueberry patch and I put, I put all of it in hugel mounds. There was a dead tree and I drug it to the edge with the machine. I dug this pit out and basically, here's all the old blueberries. 
And so you just make layers with it. You just compact layers, and here's more Hugel Mound. This whole thing is Hugel Mound in here. A Zuni bowl is super simple. It's our, kind of already showed you on that one picture. But it's basically just a bowl, and you're running water in it, and then that distributes the water level. When it is a little bowl, and if you get the rim of that bowl level, then it's going to distribute the water level. So this is really good to slow the water down and spread it out. This works really great. You can go big with these and install them after a culvert. So the culvert flows into it, maybe from your road or something like that. And then you can install one of these little Zuni bowls. Super effective. Recharge wells. This is old school recharge well. I mean, seriously. They knew what they were doing back in the day. But basically, it can be, it can be a surface well where, you know, before there was pumping, they actually had to get closer to the water. So they have these spirals. And in India, they have a lot of these wells with steps where they could walk down and then get their water. And then seasonally, that water level would change. So you had to, hence you had to have deeper steps to get all the way down to it. But doubly, being able just to pull water out, you can actually funnel water into these and use it to recharge groundwater. And that's what's super exciting to me, is trying to funnel all the rainwater back into the ground, store it in the ground, and recharge the ground. On our house, we can just, you know, you've got your roof, you've got your overflow, your gutter, down to a filter, and then here is a uh, dug well that this can go into and recharge and you could also use the well to water your house. So it'd be potable that time it goes into the well? Uh, with the right filter, yes. That's a char sand charcoal filter, which is super effective. First flush. So it, it's, it's so cool. Like when it rains heavy and it really rains, especially after we don't have any rain for a couple months, but this is every rain, but especially after a few months, the first five minutes of runoff, that's where most of the silt comes off. Most of the oils, the chemicals, things like that. That flushes out first. So you want to think about designing systems that take that into account. Rooftop, same thing. There's bird poop on top of roofs. There can be leaves, different things like that. You can, that first little five minute flush, you're just shooting it out to the side. You can use it for other things. Um, they make um, a gutter first flush system that actually works by itself. You don't have, it's not electric or anything. And it basically flushes everything out and then it cuts off the valve by itself and then it heads to your cistern. So you're just getting rid of all the water that's dirty to begin with. You want to do that with wetlands. Wetlands are, a lot of times you use wetlands to clean the water off of parking lots, and you can have these first flush systems built into it on a little bit bigger scale. Yes? Can we um, have that first flush from the roofs go to a place where we save it because it's high in phosphorus? Absolutely, yep. I think that should flush right into a little, either a little holding area, or like for what we're doing, we don't have the, we don't have that on the greenhouses because that's going right into the pond and that's good, but if, yeah, but if you're wanting to, you know, collect it for a rooftop cistern water, you know, yeah, having another receptacle to take that would be awesome. That's, that's like the good stuff. Urban permaculture. So this is super exciting. I like to think broad scale, and I like the idea of broad scale organic agriculture and having these beautiful farms that we grow a lot of produce on. But not everybody has that opportunity. There's so many people in the city. Small scale is really more productive You can than the broad scale acreage. You can basically grow three times as much on a small, you know, square footage wise on a small piece of property. So just, here's a, a garden my wife and I installed for my mom in Asheville. 
So this was nothing. This was, I wish I had some better pictures, I'm sorry. But this used to be a slope down to the base of her house. And then we installed a wall. The neighbors had to excavate to put in a, a basement. All that went behind the wall. And then we built beds inside this. So we did little handwork beds right here that are on contour that hold the water. This is sloped down the hill. So we're actually holding water on this. This is what it looked like a year or two after it was planted out. And now, here's these nanking cherries. These things are like eight foot tall. This is a hedge. This is where she was shoveling right here. So this is a fedge, really. This is a food hedge. You know, why not eat your hedge, right? So I say, it's my mom, she's harvesting some grapes. So we put, the, the center of that was all annual production. She grows her garden in the center. And then we put perennial culture on the, on the exterior. And we put a fence up, so that fence creates a boundary, which was really nice because, especially in the city, it was, it was weird. You'd walk out there because you were so close to the neighbor's house. Like, you really didn't know, like, is, is, is this their yard? Like, is this our yard? Like, nobody wanted to do anything. But as soon as you put that fence in, create that space, create that boundary, like, it just solidified it. So we were able to put that fence in and then um, put grapes on it. We've got the nanking cherries. We've got figs that are like eight foot tall there and it's just exploding right now. She's so happy with it. <laughs>